press. Minutes before the hearing started at 1 p.m. today, Louisiana time, the government filed an emergency motion concerning young boy's appeal for a bond. What the government is arguing is that this person in Utah who testified that she's known young boy since he was 11 years old, that she has previously, during difficult times in his life, had him come to Utah, provided him a support system and a safe place where he could be away from all the violence, if we can put a set of conditions in place that's going to ensure that you come back to court and that's going to ensure that you're not a danger to society. In this case, the fact that he's paying $20,000 a week to private security to monitor him, the fact that he might have paid half a million dollars to someone in Utah to put up together a support system in a place where he can stay, all that, in fact, it strengthens his case for a bond because that money is ensuring a set of conditions that is going to make sure that he comes back to court and it's going to make sure that people and the society is protected from him. The suppress. On the motion to suppress, two police officers from the Baton Rouge Street Crimes Division took the stand and they testified about their investigation at the scene of young boy's arrest back in September. Very interesting strategy by the defense. None of the evidence being used against Youngboy was recovered from those vehicles. So those illegal searches on their own are not going to throw out the evidence against Youngboy. But it helps to sort of build that argument that what happened here was just not within constitutional norms. It was not acceptable police. They're a big part of the Cantrell. And so the defense attorney's arguments are really all about establishing that, look, these cops weren't responding to a 911 call. They were just thirsty for young boy. Does all of this amount to a constitutional rights violation? Well, I'll tell you this. On Friday, Officer Barrett of the New Orleans Police Department is going to testify and his testimony is going to be very significant because he is the officer who signed the affidavits that then were used to go get the search warrants. So his testimony is going to be huge. I would say that there's already enough there for the judge to rule in young boy's favor. She could also rule against him. But look, in a case like this, where you're trying to get all the evidence thrown against you, all you can really fight for is a chance. And right now, he's got a chance. See what happens Friday. We'll have a